Hi, I'm George Pearson. In this video, I'll be talking about what do you do if you have an older copy of Photoshop or Lightroom or Photoshop Elements and you have a newer camera and the camera raw in the older programs will no longer open up the files in your newer camera. There's a way to work around this and that's what I'll be showing you in this video. Now if you like this video, make sure you click that like button and of course share with all of your friends also hit that subscribe button as well so you don't miss out on any videos in the future and to learn a lot more about my complete training courses take a look at that link right down there in the description okay let's get to it so here's the problem you take a lot of photos and you like to use this camera raw inside of Photoshop or Lightroom or over in Photoshop Elements but you have an older version of the program. Right now I have this opened up inside of Photoshop CS6 so it's an older version that's you know several years old at this point and the most recent copy of Camera Raw that comes with or is installed with Photoshop CS6 is Camera Raw 9.1. That's the last you can get for CS6. Adobe is no longer supporting Camera Raw updates in Photoshop CS6, which is okay. This will be working most of the time for you on most pictures, like I have one here. If, though, you have just purchased a new camera and it has a newer version of RAW, that newer camera may not be recognized by Camera Raw 9.1. How do you handle that? What do you do about being able to open up that image? Now, the latest version of Photoshop, Photoshop CC 2018 at this point, has Camera Raw 10.4. So it's quite a ways beyond this 9.1. And basically it's just including new cameras inside of there. So we need to have a way of converting those new Camera Raw images into a format that the older programs can read. And there actually is a way to do this, and there is a tool that Adobe supplies for free that will take care of this problem for you. Let me just bring that up here. There we go. It's called the Adobe Digital Negative Converter. And what this does is it converts the raw camera format or any other version of that, like the Canon's CR2 format. It converts that into the DNG or the Digital Negative Format, which is much more widely accepted, widely used. And if you have a brand new camera with a brand new camera raw and it's taking those in camera raw 10.4, if you convert that to the digital negative, you can then open that up in the earlier programs. Let me show you how this whole thing works, but first I'm going to show you where you can find this. Let me bring this page up here. It's right here. It's on Adobe, and it's at adobe.com, Photoshop using an Adobe DNG converter. No need to write this down right now. I will put a link for that in my show notes, and you'll find a link for the materials stuff inside of the description. So there's a link right there. You can get right to this without having to copy that down. But what it is is simply a little program. And here's a version here both for Windows and for the Mac. And it simply converts your DNG files or your RAW files rather into the DNG format, making them backwards compatible to earlier versions of their programs and actually earlier versions of other programs as well. This isn't limited to just Adobe products. This will work with any program that can open up a DNG file. Okay, see how this thing works? Let me just bring this up. Here it is. There's the digital negative converter and simply select a folder where you've placed your raw file. So I have one set up here, a little special folder that I put my photos right in that one folder and you can navigate to where you want to go right here or you know make a new folder, whatever. So I just simply made a folder for my raw files, stuck them in there, and then use the select button to navigate to that location. Now you can choose to include images contained in subfolders as well. So if you have subfolders in here, you can have those checked as well. You can also skip source image if destination image already exists. In other words, if it's already been converted, you don't need to convert it again. So just check that and it will only check or convert new images in here and not everything that you've previously taken care of. So you can use the same folder over and over again and just do the new ones. Next thing is simply to select a location to save the converted images to. 
save in the same location, they'll just be DNG files in the same place. Or if you want to, you can choose to set those into a different location. So you can actually move to a different location if you want to. To keep things organized, I've made a new folder inside of this folder called DNG. Let's just go ahead and, and find that folder. Select Folder. There is the raw folder right here. And there are images in here at this point. Let me just show you that real fast. I'll bring up that folder. There's a folder. I have, as you can see here, five camera raw files. These are all in the Canon format. And then I have this DNG folder sitting over there. OK, so go ahead and just close that down. And there's that DNG folder. So I've selected that folder, choose Select. It will then save the converted files into that new folder. Now, the next option here allows you to rename your images if you want to. By default, it's just going to keep the existing name and then change the file extension. Now, you can change the extension to DNG, uppercase or lowercase, up to you. You can add in additional things if you want to. So, for instance, you could change this from document name, upper or lowercase, or to serial numbers, or to dates, whatever's good for you. And you can add in additional naming sets in here. So you could name these all one name and then give them serial numbers afterwards. If you want to, you know, kind of name and and number or name and date your files. To change just the name, just select that and you can type in a different name right up here. By default, it'll be using the document name. I'll leave that at the default setting so it'll just be giving me the same file name and then converting that to the DNG format. Now the important part is right down here on preferences. Click on change preferences and in this window, you can choose your compatibility right up here. This is the most important part of the whole process right there. This allows you to choose which file format, which camera raw format you need to save into. Now, I know that my Photoshop CS6 is using 9.1, so if I do 7.1 then later, I'm just fine on that. That'll work out just fine for me. So take a look at your program check to see which version of Camera Raw it is using currently and then make sure you choose the right conversion here to match your Camera Raw format. Anything that's the same or earlier will actually work. But just try to choose the same if it's possible. And you see right down here it will give you a little bit of information about that. This is good for Photoshop CS6 and later in Lightroom 4.1 and later. If I change this down to the previous one here, 6.6, .6, this is good for Photoshop CS5 and Lightroom 3.6 and later. Let's do one more here. 5.4, that works for Photoshop CS4 and Lightroom 2.4 and later. So simply choose the version that you need. The same thing holds true, by the way, for Photoshop Elements. Even though those are not listed in here, the same trick applies. Just take a look in your Photoshop Elements program check the properties for your camera raw. Simply open it up and take a look at the top of the camera raw and you'll see that. It'll be right there. So take a look at that and then just make sure that your number that you choose here is lower than the number that's shown up there in the title bar of your camera raw filter. Okay, so that's all set. Down here you can choose your JPEG preview size. That's up to you. I'll leave mine at the default size. Embed fast load data, it's up to you again. Now, down below that we have compression. You can actually go ahead and compress this. I recommend not compressing to keep the highest quality level. You also can embed the original RAW file inside of the DNG RAW file. So it keeps them both together. Programs that can open up the converted DNG will open up the DNG, but the RAW will be included in that file so you could if you want to extract that raw at a later date. I don't bother with that. I just keep mine as separate files. And then finally down here you can affect your UI. That's the user interface scaling. I'll leave that at the auto setting. So our settings are all set in our preferences. Everything has been taken care of here. We have our image from folder, our image to folder, our renaming conventions, and we set our preferences. And then all you have to do is just click on convert and this will go through and quickly do its magic. Now, it just kind of disappears there for a minute. Once it's done, it pops back up here. So right now it's going through and doing the conversion process, and there it is. That's all it took to do those five photos. Very quick, as you can see, they're all now converted. 
Here's the original file names. There's the converted file file names, DNG extensions. Choose OK, and that's all done. Let's now take a look at that folder. I'll bring that back up again. Here we go. Here's our folder. There's the DNG folder. Let's open this up, and here are those digital negative files. Let's just make those nice and large icons. There we go. So our nice digital DNG files, and these are now able to be opened up in earlier versions of the program. So there it is. That is the Adobe Digital Negative Converter, and it's a great solution, again, if you have a nice new camera, but you have an older program, older Lightroom, older Photoshop, older Photoshop Elements, that's no longer opening up your RAW files. Here's how you solve that. Just simply convert those to digital negative format, which retains all of the image information as the RAW file. It's just more easily read by those earlier programs. So there you go. That's how to handle that particular little problem of an older program and a newer camera. Don't forget to share, of course, this video with everybody else and also take a look at my complete training. And again, the link is right down there in the description along with the materials folder for this particular video. And that helps me keep this YouTube channel going. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.